these are basically the core routines of a transmission controller. Um, you have your tune which reads sensors, input speed, output speed sensors. You have your shift lever position sensor where it, it reads switches on the shift lever position to determine if the driver is requesting park, drive, reverse, or neutral. Um, you have your shift scheduling, so it has to determine what gear the driver wants to be in, first, second, third, fourth, neutral, reverse. You have your desired, and, and then what happens is, is the shift schedule determines what gear the car should be in. And then if your desired gear and current gear are different, then the computer has to determine, okay, what, what shift do I need to do to get you into the desired gear? And then shifts are controlled by the upshift logic and downshift logic. And then of course we have diagnostics, which looks at pressure switches and speeds. It is, it's constantly monitoring the input and output speed and what gear you're in to make sure you're in gear. And if you're not, if the speeds don't match up, it'll throw you into a default state. And then you've got your uh, torque converter control logic, which controls the torque converter lockup clutch. Uh, we can talk a little bit about shift scheduling. It determines what gear you should begin based on your output speed and your driver position, driver pedal position. So basically, it looks at how fast the car is going and where the driver is putting, pushing the gas pedal, what position. And basic requirements are, uh, you wanna be in first, first gear when the vehicle stopped. You wanna prevent constant shifting between gears because if you allow the transmission to keep shifting between gears, it's gonna destroy the clutches and the shift materials. You, know, you wanna stay in lower gears when the pedal's depressed. So if you get in your car and you start off from stop and you got a light throttle, the car's gonna keep you in a lower gear. Um, the car's gonna upshift you quicker because it knows you don't wanna accelerate. Or if you get in your car and you want to accelerate, it'll keep you in first gear longer to give you that higher engine, to give you that higher out output torque. So basically, the lighter you have your foot on the throttle, the quicker it's going to upshift. And then, of course, if you hold your foot down on the throttle long enough, you're, if you stay in the same gear, you're going to reach the red line in the engine. So the, the shift control logic has a routine which upshifts the vehicle to reduce engine speed before it hits red line. This is an example of um, the shift schedules in a vehicle. Basically, here's your, uh, your speed, your vehicle speed is really your output, output shaft transmission speed, but we can use vehicle speed as basically the same thing. And here's your pedal position. And this, this blue line represents the one, one, two shift. So this determines when you're gonna do a, one, a shift from first gear to second gear. So you start off here, you start going, and as soon as you, your speed crosses that line, you're gonna do a one, two upshift. Now, if you notice, see how at lower speeds here, you're gonna do one, two upshift. But if you raise your pedal up here, so if your pedal's almost watt, you're gonna do that one, two upshift at a higher speed. So it keeps you into lower gears and higher speeds at higher uh, torques. So if you, step in, if you step your foot into the gas, it's gonna keep you at the lower gear longer to allow you to take advantage of that extra output torque on a low gear. And you know, the green line is the two, three, and of course the three, four. This is just a uh, shift schedule I, I got off the internet. It's, it, does, it isn't really a vehicle shift schedule, but you know, you can, if you have an automatic transmission, you could try it on your car. You can step into the gas really lightly and see what speed it up, does a one, two upshift and then step into the gas really hard from a stop and see what speed it does the one, two upshift just to, you know, you can map out your shift points in your car if you really wanted to. And then the last thing we're gonna talk about is um, upshift control. So basically, if we look here, if you notice, two clutches on define a gear. If you have one clutch on, you're in neutral. If you have three clutches on, you're burning up one of the clutches and you probably locked up the transmission and locked up the output shaft. So, so let's say we're going to do a two, three shift. Basically, when you do a shift, you have one clutch that's one clutch that gets released and one clutch that turns on and one clutch that doesn't that stays on. So in the two, three shift, we're keeping the underdrive on and we're releasing the two, four and we're applying the OD. So all these shifts, you're keeping one clutch on and you're releasing one clutch and applying one clutch. So we call the release clutch, of course, the releasing clutch and the apply clutch, the apply clutch. 
So we'll go back to shift logic here. And there's three phases basically to a upshift. First of all, we take the apply solenoid, what solenoid or clutch we want to turn on, and we turn it on. We do something called a, a fast fill. So we turn it on 100%. We don't pulse with modulate the solenoid at all. We turn it on 100% for about 80 milliseconds to let the, um, let the valve body, let all these channels fill up with fluid to get the clutch ready to apply because it takes longer to apply a clutch than it does to release the clutch. Then the torque phase. So what happens in the torque phase is the torque moves from the release clutch to the apply clutch. So the apply clutch is pulse width modulated to slowly increase the rate of apply and the release clutch is pulse width modulated to slowly vent the clutch. So the apply solenoid is pulse width modulated like 70% to slowly vent it, uh, to slowly apply it and the release clutch is pulse width modulated like 30% so it's slowly venting. And the amount of the torque released from the release clutch should match the amount of torque that the apply clutch adds. So as the release clutch is releasing, the apply clutch is uh, taking up that torque. Now, if the apply clutch releases, if the apply clutch applies too hard, then you'll get lockup. So if the clutches overlap, if, they, if, they're, if, if the apply clutch takes up too much torque and the release clutch doesn't give away enough torque, you'll get some overlap and the car will feel like it's putting on the brakes. But if the release clutch releases too quickly, then the car goes into a neutral state because the apply clutch can't take up the, um, the slippage. So the, so the engine will start revving up. So it's a, it's a fine line between locking up the transmission or letting the engine run away. And then after you, after the torque's been transferred from the apply clutch, from the release clutch to the apply clutch, then we go into speed phase where the apply clutch has to finish filling. And so we use a PID speed control to look at the turbine speed to uh, fill the um, apply clutch. And I'll show you a graph here. Okay, here's your output speed of your transmission. It doesn't change during the shift. Here's your fast fill phase. Here's your torque phase and here's your speed change. And here's the end of shift. So this is the turbine speed. This is the uh, torque output. This is the torque of the output shaft. And this is the uh, apply clutch duty cycle. And this is the release clutch duty cycle. So basically, first we go to fast fill. So we fast fill the apply clutch. So we bring it up to 100% duty cycle and fast fill it. Then we go to the torque phase where we remove torque from the release clutch and put it onto the apply clutch. So here, we start venting off the release clutch by reducing its duty cycle. And then we start ramping up the apply clutch to, to, to absorb that torque. And then here, the release clutch is fully, fully released. All the torque is on the apply clutch. Now notice that as soon as that happens, you'll see a change in turbine speed. Turbine speed will start going down but turbine speed should be here at the end of the shift. And the apply clutch hasn't been fully filled. So in the speed change part, we look at this turbine speed and we have a target turbine speed and we modulate the apply clutch so that we get the uh, turbine speed changing at the rate we want. And then finally, when it goes down to where it should be, then we end the shift and we turn on the apply clutch 100%. So that's basically how shift works.